The businessman with a garment bag over his shoulder is Dave Schofield, 31 years old, 5'11", and allegedly 196 pounds. He's not a banker or accountant or a salesman, but he is a professional man. His profession? Motorcycle racer. Dave makes his living in one of the most dangerous sports in which man competes. His skill on the racetrack has earned him the right to wear a personalized racing jersey. He won that right by competing at the national championship and scoring the highest points added up on someone's hand at the finale of last year's event. With courage and bravery, Dave achieves incredible speeds in excess of 19 miles per hour on the straights. skillfully handles his machine within inches of plastic posts and bunting in the corners. He pushes the limits of man and machine. That's why he's a champion. When he's not out in front, he rides shoulder to shoulder with other riders he has to literally trust with his life. Professional motorcycle racing is brutal, dangerous, and a savage world. Dave Schofield is a gentle man in a violent world. His job as a professional racer takes him on the road for one weekend a year. He leaves his wife and her personal trainer at home in a suburb of Rochester, Kent County, to compete in the national championship. Dave and the rest of the pros use highly tuned and specialized racing motorcycles. Most of their motorcycles are hand-built using state-of-the-art technology and a team of highly skilled technicians. No expense is spared in design and innovation to produce an ultra-modern power package, which has spectacular results. There are three types of races Dave competes in. The sprint is an eighth mile shootout. Riders pair up against each other at the start line. As the flag drops, they sprint to the finish line and the winner goes on to the next round. Having your head screwed on correctly is critical to get a good start and various riders have unique launch techniques to get an edge. But others with less experience than Dave and the pros struggle to master any technique. The hill climb is a highly technical and skillful event. Apart from being totally focused to get a good start, the riders have to negotiate an unbelievably twisty course up a very steep hill. The pros show off their skills by consistently nailing the start, picking the correct racing line to the curves, and ride within inches of hazardous straw bales before crossing the finish line. The 500 is perhaps the most grueling of all events. From a running start, competitors mount their machines and put the power down to get ahead. There are two laps of a circuit with fast straights and sharp bends. This event takes great technical ability, athleticism, and racecraft. It pushes the pro's self-centered big egos to a breaking point. Other riders can only follow in awe as Dave and the other pros push the boundaries of agility and stamina to race the 500. There are hundreds of riders who take on the three races, but there are only about 15 who have the ability to win a personalized racing jersey. The riders are guys like Dave. Definitely not the Hollywood image, but highly skilled professionals. Like Clive Hillman, a former wearer of a personalized jersey, John Betts, twice winner, Moto Mandy, David Irons. Most are small, around 5'6 to 5'8, and most are young, like Pete Stansfield, 20, Mike Federer, 21, Trevor Husky, 24, Saffron Davies Dean, 18, Ben Eddings, 16, Alex Elbro, 23, and James Skinner, 17. There are only a handful of people in the world that have the courage and skill to ride a motorcycle like Dave and the pros. One of those is Carl Simpson, Dave's protege. Carl is spectacular on the hill climb. He rides so smoothly and effortlessly, it's majestic to watch. 
For other writers, Carl is like poetry, difficult to read and wish they hadn't started. Carl is a class act with a big grin and superb dental care. When Dave's not racing, he's working on his machines. After each race, the engine is torn down and inspected piece by piece. It's a lot more complicated than twisting nuts and bolts. For instance, each gear in the transmission is ground down by hand to save a few ounces in weight. If he can get a fraction of an ounce off this cam follower, he can pick up a few extra RPMs, and that's an edge over the others. He spends at least 10 minutes all alone in his garage trying to figure out a way to improve an engine part. Only another professional racer who maintains his equipment like Dave can really appreciate the work and dedication involved. At a push, he spends over an hour a year working on his motorcycles. It's off to Grimsthorpe Castle, Lincolnshire, with his devoted friend, coach, and father figure known as Dave's Dad. It's one of the one cross-country trips they make during the racing season. They don't stop and stay in hotels. They only stop to eat, break wind, and refuel. Dave is totally dedicated to his profession. He hasn't got time for many outside or inside interests. Motorcycle racing is his life. There's no prize money, gift tokens, or discounted gym memberships, but there should be for the skill, knowledge, and dedication he has, let alone the risks he takes. For most people, Rochester to Grimsthorpe Castle would be a two hour and 30 minute journey. For Dave and Dave's dad, it's 27 hours nonstop. They don't arrive early and relax. The pit gates open at 11.30 a.m. and they arrive later that afternoon, complaining about traffic and their GPS systems. Before each race, there's about an hour of practice. They're not practicing riding, they're experimenting with frame geometry, gearing, and tires most suitable for the track. There's a lot more to riding than holding the throttle wide open. Tires alone are an exact science. Before each race, Dave and the pros cut their tires with a razor blade. Each rider has special cuts depending on the dirt and the conditions. There are many things to attend to, like taping clear plastic strips called tear-offs on their goggles. Some riders stack five or six and rip them off one by one, as flying dirt can stick and obscure their vision. The last thing they do is put on their protective boots. Each pair of boots is handcrafted to suit the rider's style and verrucas. Dave's boots are specially made in Italy by master cobbler Diana De Easy. Before the racing begins, Dave greatly enjoys the things that comes with being a champion. He makes time for his eight fans and generously signs autographs to improve their lives. He happily takes selfies of himself and relishes these intimate moments with his supporters. quick shower after touching his fans and he's at the start ready to secure the championship. Dave is totally focused. Like a gunfighter he shows no emotion, not even a blink as he watches for a flicker of movement from the starting flag. Dave started riding the championship beautifully, like the true pro he is, but as the weekend progressed he hits a series of setbacks. Bad starts, mechanical failures, alcohol poisoning, and a reoccurring fungal infection affected his winning streak. And there was no way he could gain enough points to take the championship. There were four riders who had enough points to have a shot at being this year's champion. One was Dave's best friend, John Gamer, nicknamed Close Shave and a veteran of the circuit. Not only does he excel at each of the events, but is highly skilled in motocross, cross-stitch, and flower arrangements. There was no one more respected by his fellow riders and the fans as John Gamer. The second rider who could win, one of the youngest, 20-year-old Danners, or Daniel to his mother. It's his first year as a professional expert. 
Danner's the crazy kid from Dorking, Berkshire. Off the track, he's conservative compared to his actions on the track. He's crashed 15 times during the championship, caused by notifications from his family's WhatsApp group. Danner said, you never know how fast you can go until you turn off those notifications. If he doesn't crash, he often wins. The third rider in contention is Ari Cooper. Ari's nickname is the Mexican Racer. He's the most flamboyant of all the professional riders, but he's very serious about his racing, particularly late in the event when he wanted the points. Ari said, I don't want to hurt anybody. I've just got to win no matter what. It's going to be either a win or someone visits me at the hospital. I dig carnations, man. The fourth and final rider to be a contender was Obed Cooper, apparently no relation to Ari, but they both come from the same small village in Wales. Obed goes under the nickname Petrol Wizard. He's the winningest rider at the event and has stolen the checkered flag six times without being arrested. As the championship nears conclusion, John, Danners, Ari, and Obed battle it out for the remaining points. Mathematician Professor Christopher Stacker appears from the beer tent with his state-of-the-art Victor 200 adding machine. After intense button pushing and bribing, the professor declares the winner as Obed Cooper, a worthy winner. I'm not absolutely sure this is the Victor Model 200. 